so now the leaves are done so let's do the windows so i'm going to uh, this is my base coat y0301 chiffon let me start I'm going to paint these in yellow so I think I'll well, okay I'll, I haven't decided yet I'll think about it later so okay this vase I I plan to do it in yellow again so I'll this is inside so And sorry, I left this. And I'll do this also in yellow. So I'm doing a limited color palette. So I won't be using a lot of colors, just a few colors that I would be repeating on and off throughout my picture. So the yellow will be here, 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 everywhere. Otherwise these stones could have been grey, but I don't want to bring too many colours. I like a limited palette. This, hinge this is another hinge here. The best thing about alcohol markers is there are no streaks. It's a perfect brush mark. You won't find that with water-based markers. But water based markers can be used directly on your coloring books.
Here it goes. So, is it dry? I'll give it a few minutes, let it dry, and then I'll come back. So, I think it's dry now. I'll put this aside. I don't think I need it now. Now I'm going to use um, these three colors, uh, Sand, PC946, Yellow Ochre uh, 942, and uh, Golden Rod uh, 1034. Okay. I'm starting with Golden Rod. Light strokes. Now I'm bringing my yellow ochre. And now my sand. I'll repeat this. That's okay. Press for our a little brittle. You need to be very careful. You can't put a lot of pressure when you are coloring with Prisma. But I still love them. They are my favorite. I'm sorry, uh, uh, when I was doing the shoe, a lot of time it went out of focus. I didn't realize that until I checked it much later. So now I've adjusted the camera a little higher. So sorry about that. Hmm. Now it's done. So I'll do the same for this side. So what I'll do is I'll use the three colors for most of the stuff. So I'll put it on speed so that it doesn't bore you and uh, I'll come back once I finish everything.
want the cobblestones to be dark on the side and the highlight is in the center so this is not dark enough so what is your rub also should be very sharp And what I'm doing is I'm just covering the whole a whole stone with my yellow ochre, uh, just leaving a little highlight in the middle, and then the corners I'm sure I'm darkening with my golden rod. That's all. So I'll just complete this and then come back. I'm going to do everything the same way. So now this is done. Let me do these hinges. I'll use the same combo. I'll start with my golden rod. Oh, it's recording. Yeah, I need to check again and again. My camera stops recording all of a sudden, and I don't know why it does that. And this is my sand. I'll just repeat the three. This is my shadow. This is my mid-tone yellow ochre. And this is sand. So shadow. Shadow here. Sorry. And then my mid-tone yellow ochre. I'll just pull a little bit. Here and here. And then, and then darken this a little bit more. Then, what's this? Hmm. So I think I'm good here again. And then a little bit of this. Then I blend everything. And then I bring in the shadow a little more. I think this will do. These small areas, they can be done with just one color also. That's it. So, now let's do the step. So I'll bring in two more colors so now this golden rod will be my mid-tone and I'm bringing another mid-tone mineral orange and then sienna brown okay I did one more thing I was trying mineral orange and it liked it I just used this for my shadow area here so I just went over the shadow area a little bit with my mineral orange that's what I did off camera so let me let me grab this okay so uh, i'm using uh mineral orange first i'll darken the shadow areas this is my shadow area this is my shadow area This is my shadow area. Now I'll bring in my golden rod I'll blend everything with golden rod 
and then pull the cord and rod a little further I'll do the same here this is recording yeah it is Mm. Now I'll bring my another metron which is yellow ochre. I want the I want the highlight here so I'll just mark the highlight area and then Now I will bring in my sienna brown which is my shadow color and uh, This is Sienna Brown. Now I'm taking mineral orange. Can you see this? Is it within the camera? Okay, mineral orange. And going over this and it's not sharp, so I'll sharpen it. When your pencil is sharp it's easy to lay your colors Check if it's within camera, yeah.
what I'm doing is I'm laying light layers now this was heavy now this light so that I can blend the next color easily when the layers are light the color the next color is easy to blend in my next color is golden rod PC1034 so I'll start a little I have made two videos on how to blend colors the first is about blending two colors and the second is about blending three colors so if you have a look at it you'll know why I am doing this and how I am doing this in coloring it's more about technique it's not what color you choose you can choose any color any pencil it need not be professional pencils you can use the most inexpensive inexpensive pencils and still achieve excellent result if your technique is right if you master the technique then you can create magic now i'll bring my yellow ochre yellow ochre can you see this it's 942 so it's advisable to master the technique of blending first that way you can achieve great results even if you don't don't fret about it because coloring is all about the journey it's not the end result if you see a five-year-old coloring he doesn't bother about how it will turn out in the end he just enjoys laying down the color on the paper i think we forget that when we, as we grow older we bother we worry about how it's going to look what will others say we forget that we color for ourselves it's not for others It's something that brings joy to us. This is a sand. Sorry, I forgot to tell. This is sand 940. And I'm blending everything with sand and coloring my highlight area as well. Now I'll darken the, this is sienna brown, can you see that, just a shadow area. These are the areas where the light doesn't hit directly and it's dark. And then blending that with my mineral orange. That's it. Now I'm going to take my blender. This time I'm trying to use my Devon blender. This is my favorite blender. And
den Wert an hier. Und den haben wir bildet. So, I'll put this away and bring my next color. which is my bluish gray not my greens but my blues so this is a uh, let me see this g340 horizon green so i'm going to use this I'm not touching the dots. I'll also do the door in this blue color. This is word I know. This has this should have been brown, but I like fancy doors. In my previous illustration I did the door in pink I like the way it looked so I'm going to do this in blue so Should I use the same blue here? Or should I use a different color? Mm, or not different? Let me leave this. I will come to it later. And what about this? So this is going to be green, so I'll use blue here. Oh, I'll cover this also in blue. Okay, let me cover this in blue. I want this to be the point of, you know, attraction. So, I'm not going to use a lot of colors, bright colors and other pieces. Yeah. 
this dry for some time. Mm. In the meantime, I think I'll do green on this. Yeah. So for green, we were using pale lemon yellow G020. Till this is drying, let me use this and kind of This is a chain and this all thing will be hollow. So I'm not going to put any color on these. So let me color this as well. Mm, okay, this is also leaf. I could have made each leaf with a different green, but no, I don't want to. Doesn't matter because as a whole, it doesn't make much of a difference if your flower is not the central point of attraction. These are small flowers, small leaves. There you go. Okay. Looks a little with this mark. Okay. For the blue, I have these cobalt. Can you see? Cobalt turquoise. PC105, Aquamarine, PC905, and Light Aqua 992. So this is my highlight color. This is my mid-tone. And this is the um, color that I'm going to produce for the shadow. So I'll use this first, then this, and then come to the highlight. So this was my cobalt turquoise. Now I bring in my aquamarine. So the thing is, this is the window. The light is coming from here. So these will be lighter in color. This part of the curtain and the part which is close away from the light will be darker. So this will be the highlight and this will be the shadow. Okay. 
Now I bring in my light aqua, which is the highlight color and blend everything. So I'll go over this over and over again till I'm satisfied. Shadow color cobalt turquoise for this part, mid-tone aquamarine and here my light aqua. Just checking if it's within the frame. Taking my light aqua. So I'll do the same for here. Okay, the, the door is, I'll break it into small, small parts. See, you see these darker lines. So I'll take this as one part. This is another, this is another, this is another. So these are planks. One, two, three, four, five, and six planks. So I'll treat each plan, plank differently and apply the same principle, darker to light, darker to light, darker to light, okay? So let me start. This is my shadow area. I'll, I'll show what I've done. I'll use the same principle here. See, here also there are many planks. One, two, three, four, five, six, and one more here. So I've treated each plank differently. Light, dark, ship, dark pink here and the lighter pink here. Darker to light, darker to light. So this is what I'm going to do in this page as well. I'll treat each plank differently, I mean from dark to light, not the whole thing. First layer also, but let's put it very with light hand so that the blending is easy. You can darken it later. I have a very bad habit of using pressure. But if you are new, practice with light hand. It will be easier. So now I'm bringing my Aquamarine, which is my mid-tone. I'm leaving the highlight area. I'm not touching the highlight area. So... I'm 
only a little bit then bring it further just a little bit and leave it there same thing here blend it Pull it a little further and leave it there. I'm going to bring my light aqua PC992 and blend everything. This is my highlight color so I'm coloring on the highlight area as well and over the shadow area as well because I want everything to come together. I'll then go over the shadow area again with my dark color that is cobalt turquoise so that the contrast is visible. I like a good contrast see this is dark this is light this is dark this is light so Now I'll darken the shade area again, shade area again with my cobalt turquoise.
now I'm bringing my aquamarine and I won't touch the highlight area just blend the cobalt turquoise with the aquamarine and leave it at that that's it just make the blending of these two a little smoother and that's all the transition has to be smooth that's it And since it's just half a plank, so we assume it's only up till here. So there is no highlight area in this. And plus this is close to this brick. So stone, sorry, not brick. So here is the door. I'm going to use my... Let me try my colorless blender. I have two colorless blender, Derwent blender and my Prisma color. I use this a lot and my Prisma color blender is something new. I'm using a blender. So this door is done. Now I'll do the same for this curtain. So first I used my cobalt turquoise, then I used my aquamarine, same principle, and then my light turquoise to blend everything. I think this looks good. I'm not going to go over it here again. This is my aquamarine. This is light aqua.
कलरलेस ब्लेंडर Now I'll do the same here and here. Quarter cause. Then I'm using aquamarine. This is light aqua. Sorry, I didn't realize that video had stopped recording. I did the same what I did here. I'm using a colorless blender. there you go so this is over now we'll go and do the flowers and the leaves